are at stake here in the state of Michigan during next Tuesday's Republican primary, the biggest prize out of four states holding contests that day. For tonight's debate, we're partnering with Facebook. The conversation about this election has been intense, as the crowd is here. <laughs> Since January 1st, 53 million people in the U.S. have been talking about the election on Facebook. Tonight, there are just four candidates on the stage. Their position has been determined by their standing. In an average of the five most recent national polls as recognized by Fox News and conducted and released by March 1st. Here they are. Businessman Donald Trump. Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Florida Senator Marco Rubio. And Ohio Governor John Kasich. Tonight's rules are simple. Up to 60 seconds for each answer, 30 seconds for each follow-up response. And if a candidate goes over the allotted time, you will hear this. So pleasant. Lovely. We have a big crowd here. And while we expect the audience to be enthusiastic and responsive at times, and they have already been, we also expect them to be respectful, and we want the candidates to get their full time. So somewhere between a library and a Red Wings game. Am I right? Okay. Let's get started. Mr. Trump, as yes. you may have heard, the 2012 Republican nominee for President Mitt Romney had some things to say about you today. He he said your domestic policy will lead to recession. He said your foreign policy will make us less safe. And then he listed what he said are your personal qualities. Quoting now Romney on Trump, quote, the bullying, the greed, the showing off, the misogyny, the absurd third grade theatrics. He challenged you to, he challenged you to answer with substance, not insults. How do you answer Mitt Romney, sir? Well, look, he was a failed candidate. He should have beaten uh, President Obama very easy. He failed miserably, and it was an embarrassment to everybody, including the Republican Party. He went away. It looked like he went away on a vacation the last month. So I don't take that, and I guess, obviously, he wants to be relevant. He wants to be back in the game. As far as domestic policy and trade, which is killing our country, he said free trade, and I believe in free trade also. But if you look at China, and if you look at Japan, and if you look at Mexico, both at the border, by the way, where they're killing us, both at the border and with trade, and every other country we do business with, we are getting absolutely crushed on trade. And he said free trade, I say free trade, great, but not when they're beating us so badly. With China, we're going to lose $505 billion in terms of trades. It, you just can't do it. Mexico, $58 billion. Uh, Japan, probably about, they don't know it yet, but about $109 billion. Every country we lose money with. As far as I'm concerned, we've got to reduce, we've got to, we have to redo our trade deals 100 percent. I have the greatest business people in the world lined up to do it. We will make great trade deals. Mr. Trump, Romney also talked about your position on race and the contro controversy over your failure to denounce David Duke on Sunday. You have repeatedly disavowed him since then. But I'd like to go deeper than that. What are your views on the Ku Klux Klan and white supremacists? I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. It was very clear. That question was also talked about in the form of groups. Groups. I want to know which groups are you talking about? You have to tell me which groups. Ultimately, he got to the Ku Klux Klan, which obviously I'm going to disavow. And by the way, if you look on my Twitter account, almost immediately after the program, they were disavowed again. You know, it's amazing. When I do something on Twitter, everybody picks it up, goes all over the place. But when I did this one, nobody ever picks it up. Take a look at my Twitter account. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Senator Rubio. <laughs> Senator Rubio, three weeks ago, you said, quote, I don't do the personal attacks, primarily because it's not who I am, because I think it's beneath the office that I'm seeking, but also because I don't want to embarrass my kids. But in the past week, you've mocked Mr. Trump's tan, 
You've made fun of his spelling. You called him a con artist. You suggested he wet himself backstage at the last debate, along with other vulgar jokes and jabs. So what happened? Yeah, you know, Brett, let me say something. This campaign for the last year, Donald Trump has basically mocked everybody with personal attacks. He's done so to people that are sitting on the stage today. He's done so about people that are disabled. He's done it about every other candidate in this race. So if there's anyone who's ever deserved to be attacked that way, it's been Donald Trump for the way he's treated people in the last campaign. Now that said, I would much prefer to have a policy debate. I hope that's what we'll have here tonight. Let's have a policy debate. We Let's will. talk about Donald Trump's strategy and my strategy and Ted's strategy and John Kasich's strategy when it comes to ISIS and on health care and on the important issues facing this country. But let's be honest, too, about all this. The media has given these personal attacks that Donald Trump has made an incredible amount of coverage. Let's start talking again about the issues that matter to this country. I'm ready to do that starting right here, right now, tonight. Mr. Trump, your response? Well, I also happen to call him a lightweight, okay? And I have said that, so I would like to take that back. He's really not that much of a lightweight. And as far as, and I have to say this, I have to say this, he hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I... <clears throat> okay, Senator Cruz. You say that you are the true conservative in this race. But 15 states have voted now, and you have won only four of them. You've lost repeatedly with what is supposed to be your core voter groups, including evangelicals and conservatives. So hasn't your brand of conservatism been rejected by an electorate that appears to be more taken with Mr. Trump's populist message? Well, Megan, you know, at the end of the day for the folks at home, this is not about the insults back and forth between the candidates. This is not about what attacks we can throw at each other. This is the people at home who are struggling. Through seven years of Barack Obama, this is the single moms who are working two and three jobs, 28, 29 hours a week, because their hours have been forcibly reduced because of Obamacare. This is the truck drivers and the steel workers and the mechanics with calluses on their hands, who've seen their wages not grow year after year after year while the cost of living goes up. This is all the young people coming out of school with student loans up to their eyeballs that aren't able to find a job. And I don't think the people of America are interested in a bunch of bickering school children. They're interested in solutions, not slogans. It's easy to say, make things better, make things great. You can even print it and put it on a baseball cap. But the question is, do you understand the principles that made America great in the first place? As president, I will repeal every word of Obamacare. I'll pull back the regulators that are killing small businesses. And we will pass a simple flat tax and abolish the IRS. And what that's going to do, Megan, is small businesses are going to explode. We're going to see millions of high-paying jobs. We're going to see wages going up. We're going to see opportunity. That's where our focus needs to be. That's where my focus is. And that is why our campaign is the only campaign that over and over again has beaten Donald Trump to date. And it's why we're the one campaign that going forward can and will beat Donald Trump in this election. Go ahead, Mr. Trump. I've heard Ted say that over and over again on television, that he's the only one that can beat me. Just for the record, I've won 10. He's won three or four. Last week, in fact, on Tuesday, I was a half a million votes higher than him. I was a million votes higher than Marco. One million votes. That's a lot of votes and was by far in first place. So I keep hearing that he's the only one that can beat me, but he's getting beaten very, very badly. So where does this come from? Where does it come from? Go ahead, Senator Rubio. Yeah, I would just say a couple of things. There is no doubt that Donald has done well in these elections. There's no doubt about that. The, the numbers are there. The, the numbers also say two-thirds of the people who have cast a vote in a Republican primary or caucus have voted against you. They do not want you to be our nominee. And the reason why is because 
We are not going to turn over the conservative movement or the party of Lincoln or Reagan, for example, to someone whose positions are not conservative, to someone who last week defended Planned Parenthood for 30 seconds on a debate stage, to someone, for example, that has no ideas on foreign, someone who thinks the nuclear triad is a rock band from the 1980s, to someone who time and again on issue after issue has not proven that he has the principles that outline what the conservative movement has been about and, as Ted said, the things that made America great. America is great because of the conservative principles of limited government and free enterprise and our strong national okay. defense. And our nominee needs, needs to be someone that stands by those things. All right. Donald has not demonstrated that. Go ahead, Mr. Trump, and then we're going to have to go to Governor so, Kasich. Very nice words, but happens to be wrong. CNN just came out with a poll two days ago. That a national poll, excuse me, that a national poll, a national poll where he's at 15, he's at 14, and, and I'm at 49. So when he says 75 percent, that would mean that 80 percent of the people don't dig you, and I'm back down to of 50. Of all the people on the stage, he performs the worst against Hillary Clinton. Wrong. Nominee, I beat Hillary, I beat Hillary Clinton. Points, I beat Hillary Clinton in many polls. I beat Hillary Clinton in many polls. If you're our nominee, excuse hold on, me, hold on, I think hold on, I'm hold talking. Hold on, excuse me. I beat Hillary Clinton in many polls. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I hope you can The audience cannot understand when you're talking over each other. Finish your point, Mr. Trump. I beat Hillary Clinton in many polls. The Q poll just came out. I beat Hillary Clinton in a recent Fox poll. I beat Hillary Clinton in USA Today. I beat her today in a poll in Ohio. I beat, I'm the only one that beats Hillary Clinton. I beat, and I haven't, I have not started on Hillary yet. Believe me, I will start soon. I haven't even started. Okay. Governor Kasich. Governor Kasich, today you admitted that you have a narrow path to the nomination through a contested convention. Today also Mitt Romney proposed that Republicans should vote for Senator Rubio in Florida. They should vote for you in Ohio. They should vote for Senator Cruz in states that he can beat Mr. Trump to prevent Mr. Trump from getting the nomination. So do you buy Romney's blueprint? And can you say tonight to your Florida supporters that they should vote for Senator Rubio to get a contested convention. You know, this is, <clears throat> this is so much about process. It, it frankly is boring to me. I would like it clear, though, since we're talking about polls, I beat Hillary Clinton by more than anybody, by 11 points. And the reason it happens... <clears throat> in one poll. The reason, in one poll. You know, the reason is because, as the Democrats tell me all the time, I can get the crossover votes. You see, because throughout this campaign, I've talked about issues. I have never tried to go and get into these kind of scrums that we're seeing here on the stage, and people say everywhere I go, you seem to be the adult on the stage. In terms of, in terms of, you know, Mitt Romney's, a, you know, he's a great guy, but he doesn't determine my strategy. Uh, the fact of the matter is I'm running for president because I worked hard to fix this country when I was uh, in Washington as the chairman of the budget committee where we had some of the most significant job growth after we balanced the budget. We had wages going up. It was very successful in Ohio. Our wages grow faster than the national average. We're up over 400,000 jobs. We paid down back in the old days, they paid down a half a trillion dollars of the national debt. It's a formula that works. And I believe that formula will work when I return to Washington as the president. And by the way, I won't need on-the-job training because I know how to do all of this. And within the first 100 days, I will have a plan that will pass the Congress because it is reasonable and I can bring both sides together. But, Governor, so. you, say, you, you say this is all about process, but for voters, they need to see a path to get to the nomination if they're going to support you. On Super Tuesday, you finished in single digits in nine out of 11 states. So you can see that your path is through a contested convention. How do you get Well, Brett, I, I think we're all really there. I mean, the simple fact is, is that, uh, you know, I, I, you all wrote me off. You wrote me off before I even got to New Hampshire. Then when I finished second in New Hampshire, you wrote me off in the South. Then you wrote me off in, the, uh, in Super Tuesday. I split delegates in Vermont with Donald Trump. I finished second in Massachusetts and we won delegates in Virginia. But guess what? It's now March Madness and we're heading up north to the, to the place, to my turf, okay? And let me just tell you this, I will win Ohio. And I am going to move all across this country. And over time, as people begin to finally hear my message, you know what people say, Brett, to me all the time? Why don't they give you any time on the debate stage? Why is that? So now all of a sudden I'm starting to get it. And what I want the people to know is, I know how to bring people together, Republicans and Democrats. 
I have successfully, both at the federal level and the state level, brought economic growth, wage growth, and, and economic security to this country, and I want to go back and do it again, and I'm going to keep talking about my message of bringing people together and motivating people in the neighborhoods to realize they don't need somebody from Washington galloping in. There are many things they can do where they live because the strength of our country is in our neighborhoods and our families, Thank and I'm going to keep doing this.